uh, at the Sackett and Confederate Cemetery. Uh, thank you all for coming out um, to show our respect, our remembrance, and our reverence for our ancestors. Um, I really appreciate it, especially uh, in these days and times that we're in right now. It's so important for us to, to, to stand strong on our convictions and to, to stand strong for our ancestors and, and to be proud of them. Uh, I especially want to thank the 28th Georgia Company G, who is going to be doing our honor volley and providing the German Five Band, and the Harriet Gold Camp, the United Daughters of the Confederacy Camp, 2526, for their participation in the event today. I want to thank Mr. Ronald Edge with the 36th Georgia Infantry Division of Reenactors for uh, supporting us with the artillery piece today. Um, you know, we had one last year from Rome and uh, the Rome uh, SCB camp. They weren't able to make it this year, so he filled in and uh, brought his little mountain howitzer out to fire with the honor volley. So that was a, that's an honor for us to be able to, to experience that. And so we appreciate that. And also, I appreciate everybody that's taking part in helping preserve this cemetery, helping keep this cemetery up, and other Confederate cemeteries um, right here in Gordon County at 915. Uh, Stan Wadi says Confederate Veterans Camp uh, had a big cleanup day out here, along with the public, uh, which they do every year, and have a big cookout and uh, put the flags out and. Uh, the small flags on the headstones and the new flag on the flagpole to get everything looking good for Memorial Day. And this fella right over here, we want to thank him. If y'all notice this beautiful, not only the black mulch, but the flowers and the plants. If you'd have come out here two weeks ago and seen this centerpiece where there's a, a mass grave of unknown Confederate soldiers, they did a massive amount of work and it just looks great. That's the best I've ever seen it look since, since I've been coming here. Give him an extra hand round of applause. He uh, used his own vehicle, went and, went and got the mulch, come out here, laid it all out, did all the flowers, and it, it looks amazing. It looks very, very good. And um, one more thing, I'm not going to be real long-winded. I'm going to get out and let the real speakers. I'm, I'm not a keynote speaker. I'm just an announcer, more or less. Uh, so I don't have a whole lot more. But um, when we were out here cleaning the cemetery up a few weeks ago, you know, we, there's there's a book, a little a little folder like this that we always keep in the right here in the center where the flag poles at in the little metal box. And whenever people come to this cemetery from all over the country and all over the world internationally, people come to this cemetery. And I got to looking through that and reading it, and I I was really touched um, to read people's comments in there. You know, people don't know who keeps this cemetery up or, and, and we're not the only ones. I mean, there's people from all over the county and people just come up sometimes. If you got, they got an extra few minutes, they'll come pick up sticks, pick up trash, bring their weed eaters. We've got, like say, the SCB 915 camp will do it as a group, but also individual members of the camp will come throughout the summer and, and spring and different times of the year and clean it up. But what I'm getting at is so many comments are you able to that see that soldier that back there? Said, Thank you so much, whoever is keeping this cemetery up for providing these soldiers, these Confederate soldiers, our ancestors, with a peaceful, a beautiful and peaceful place to lay. And um, if you get a chance before you leave, number one, go over there and sign the book. Um, you know, write your name in it, where you're from, if you feel like it. And, and just flip through there and read some of the comments. And you will see people from all over the country. You will see people from other countries, from across the seas, from Canada, from Mexico, from Europe, uh, from all over the world, people come to this cemetery. And I don't know if we really know how special of a place this is or if we think about that much of how special of a place this is and how lucky we are to have it. Um, it's, it's a very unique cemetery. Um, thank you to Miss Green that, that put it all together so many years ago. You know, she found it in her heart to, to, to gather these boys up and, and give them a place. And thank you to everybody over the years that continued to, uh, to let it be here. Because it, it does take a lot of work. Um, 
I've seen pictures of this place back at the turn of the century. Originally, I don't know how how many of you know how much of the history, and I'm no expert by any means, but I do know a little bit. But I've seen some pictures around the turn of the century of this place. Originally, these headstones were wooden whenever they were put in. This is not the original headstones nor the original layout of this cemetery. Um, I've seen pictures of this cemetery. It, it was before this rock wall was built. It was just a small iron uh, fence around it, and there was hogs and cows in here, and all of the wooden headstones were rotted down, and there were animals using this in here for pasture. And so for this to be what it is now has, has took a lot of work over the years from a lot of different people. Um, I believe it was back in maybe the 40s, between the 20s and 40s, somewhere I'm not exactly sure when they did the reconfiguration. They put these um, new headstones and did the reconfiguration. If I understand correctly, these headstones are not actually where the graves are at. A lot of these graves were lost. Like I say, they had wooded headstones and they had got into disrepair. And a lot of these original um, grave sites are lost to history, just like the soldiers, unknown soldiers that are in them, known only to God. But the federal government did come in and place these uh, new headstones in the design and put one for as many, you know, for each soldier. And that's my understanding of it. But like I say, it's just a, a beautiful place, and I feel um, very happy to be able to be involved with it, with the upkeep, with this Memorial Day, and just to be able to come visit it anytime. So, if, you know, if you only come out here once a year for this, which is lovely that you do, Come on out here sometime one weekend if you're driving around, you don't have nothing to do. When there's nobody out here, just you. And this is the most peaceful, beautiful cemetery that you'll ever visit anywhere. I mean, it's just an amazing place. But um, anyway, I'm going to bring up Mr. Stephen Chastain, which is the first lieutenant commander of the 915 um, South Confederate Veterans Stamwadi Camp. And he is going to lead us in our pledges. And if you have one of these uh, programs, the pledges are on the back, and you can follow along. If everybody will stand, if you're able, remove your hats, and we will do that now. Thank you, Legion. Thank you, Legion. Thank you, Mr. Chester. I appreciate it. Now I'm going to bring up Miss, excuse me, not Miss, Dr. Joanne Meadows. She's the president of Harriet Gold, Chapter 2526 of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, and she is going to do our invocation. Thank you, Commander. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we adore thy love and follow us in the history of our country, and especially would we thank thee for our Confederate history. We thank thee for its pure record of virtue, valor, and sacrifice, and for the inspiring reflection that, despite its bitter disappointment and sorrow, it complained, proclaimed for us all the world that we came through it years of trial and struggle with our battered sheer spirit. Our capture as patriotic and courageous people, untarnished and nothing to regret in our defense. A delight and the honor of our system. Give us grace, our Heavenly Father, faithfully to accept thy will concerning us and make us all to glorify thee in sincere obedience to thy holy commandment through the merit and meditation, meditation of thy Son, our only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, now I would like to introduce Mr. Christopher Reed. 
He is going to be our keynote speaker for today with his speech, Remembrance of the Fallen. Uh, Mr. Ree is a historian and the creator of a YouTube and Facebook channel, History Reminds Us. He goes all over the southeast and all over the country and uh, makes videos of all different kind of historical sites, uh, all different kind of battles, uh, reenactments and things like that. So if everybody will give him a round of applause, we'll have him up here to speak. Y'all go check out his YouTube channel and his Facebook, grab him on the way out, and he will tell you how to do that. Thank you, Chris. How you guys doing today? Doing good, thank you. All right, so my name is Christopher Reed, and like Brandon was saying, I am a YouTuber and a historian uh, of History Reminds Us. I started back in 2020 uh, when all that stuff was going on, and I felt like it was my obligated duty to try to share the history and let everybody understand the sacrifices that these men made, uh, and I thought that was very important. Um, I actually just recently got back from the 100, 160th anniversary of the Battle of Mobile Bay uh, and witnessed that reenactment. And, uh, you know, it was it was eye-catching to see how these men lived, how these men had a battle in these conditions, and and I've even been a reenactor, and. Uh, and it's been tough. Uh, you, you, you camp out and you see how they're doing. You know, you learn how to do all these things and how to maintain yourself being hydrated and stuff like that. So I've done all that as well. Um, but Memorial Day for me presents a mere date on the calendar. It is a day of remembrance, a day to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the principles they believe in. The Battle of Resaca holds a special place in history as the first major conflict of the Atlanta campaign. During the Civil War, General Sherman's Union forces forced faced off against General Johnson's Confederate Army, marking a pivotal turning point in the trinity of the war. In the aftermath of the Battle of Resaca, the Resaca Confederate Cemetery emerged as a testament to the sorrow, gratitude, and, and community dedication. Miss Mary Green and her sister, moved by the plight of fallen Confederate soldiers, hastily buried and established the sacred ground. With the help of their community, they gathered the remains from shallow graves and returned them, creating the first Confederate cemetery in Georgia. Here we stand on this, on, on this historic site, where 450 soldiers found their final resting. While some are identified, 424 graves remain marked on them. This cemetery stands is a potent testament to the love and dedication of those who sought to honor and remember the fallen, ensuring that their legacy endures for generations to come. The better Memorial Day, a day that has been sparked with controversy, seems to remember that the estimated 258,000 Confederates gave their life during this period. Some may question the commentary of Confederate soldiers, but it's a crucial, it, it is crucial to understand that the memorial service is about honoring the fallen, regardless of the side they fought on. Having visited numerous Confederate cemeteries across the country, each telling a unique story, sacrifice, bravery, and the complexity of a nation at war, I can attest to the importance of the memorial. As we gather here for Confederate memorial service, we pay tribute to those who perished in battle, corrupt to diseases, and faced the harsh conditions of Union prisons. By doing so, we preserve history and defend our heritage, ensuring the legacy of the Confederate soldiers endures. Let us well, into the potent words of Francis Miles Finch uh, poem, the, bright, the blue and the gray, which beautifully captures the unity that death brings to those who once fought on opposite, opposite sides. In the equal verse, Finch describes the soldiers both blue and gray resting under the sod and dew awaiting the judgment day. The poem underscores the equal splendor with which nations treat the fallen. Regardless of the color of the uniforms, 
highlighting the vague humanity that pretends the conflict of war. As we reflect on the Civil War, a brutal conflict that left an indirable mark on the collective consensus of the American people, we must acknowledge the dragging toll it took on our nation. A total of 620,000 or 620,000 lives were lost during those years. And today, I want to sh sh shed a light on the top 10 states that bore the, the heaviest burden of the Civil War. Casualties are Civil War casualties. At the apex of this following list is New York, which I know that's not a Confederate state, but we can kind of see that if you go down the list, even South Carolina and Virginia, Alabama and Pennsylvania, and, and all these states round out the top 10. So it just shows you that not only was it the Confederates that suffered heavy casualties, but it was also the Union. Uh, and these were all our brothers. These were people's husbands or fathers uh, that answered the call, no matter what they believed in, but they answered the call to protect their home or whatever they believed in. But it's not us to be able to decide or judge them for their actions. Uh, all we can do is to teach and educate about these men, honor these men, and the sacrifices that they made. As we examine these numbers, we must recognize that the toll of the war was felt by families on both sides, by communities shattered by loss, and by a nation struggling to find healing. Memorial services such as this are not about glorifying war or emphasizing the division that once tore us Apart. Instead, they serve as a potent reminder that the soldiers we honor today were individuals, fathers, sons, and brothers who answered the call of duty with courage and conviction. Regardless of the uniforms they wore or the side they fought on, they were Americans and their sacrifices should be eternally respected. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. Eternally respected. It is our duty as custodians of, of history to preserve the stories of these men to ensure that their bravery, bravery is not forgotten. As we stand here today, we are not just commemorating the battle fought on these grounds. We are honoring the men who stood on these fields, the echoes of the valor, still resonating through time. The upcoming, and then May 17th through the 19th is the 160th of Rizaka, so I would invite everyone to come out there and, um, you know, witness that battle. If you haven't been to the reenactment before, uh, it's always a fun event to go to, and you can kind of walk the camps, and you can see how everybody, you know, act, they're, they're dressed, and, and then you can see how the battle takes place. Um, like, I, I, I was, I did the battle of Rizaka one year, and I was, I was in the 31st Alabama, uh, and then this year I'm going to fall in with an artillery group. Uh, I, I like going out there, the camaraderie that you can build with your brothers, uh, getting to camp with everyone. Brandon's done it. He, he enjoys it when he can get out there. Uh, but, you know, I, I can't think enough about the Stan Water Camp and the United Daughters of the Confederacy for even allowing me this opportunity to come out and speak. Um, and, and, and just trying to share some of my stories that I've seen traveling. Um, Brandon knows I, I, I travel all over and film a lot of places. Um, uh, I'm going to be at Bryson Crossroad in June. Uh, so I'm looking forward to being on those same ground, the same grounds that Forest Point. Um, also, when I was out in Mobile Bay, I, I visit Bragg's Grave. Um, I visit Long Street. So, you know, I, I just have a, it's just an honor and a privilege to be able to do what I've been able to do. But I also couldn't have done it without my wife who helps me get back and forth to these events. So a lot of appreciation that I, that I, that should be for me, I really think it should be for my wife. Because she's the one that puts a lot of time and effort to get me to these events, even working and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I, I just want to say thank you again for everyone for allowing me to speak to you guys today and I'll, I'll stay after for some questions if you guys have any questions if you guys would like to find me on facebook or even on youtube um I, you know all you guys got to do is subscribe and support in the channel um 
And uh, I look forward to seeing everyone out in Rick's in May. I really do. I just run out. Thank you, baby. Yeah. And they're going to do it again, and then the can is going to go off. Oh. Sam Waddingham and the past commander, and he just does so much for us. And uh, we could do what we do without him. So let's get, it, let's get him around the clock. He's going to close it out for us. I appreciate everybody coming. I'm going to hand it over to Mr. B. If you got any questions for me or anybody else, just, just find us before you leave. We'll be glad to answer any of those things. What I'm going to do is get the charge. Sounds better to The charge is supposed to give it about 10 to get the reason. The union is not even better to bet than 1906 in New York. And it goes something like this. The new sons of Confederate veterans, and it's a vindication of the power of this new doctrine. With your strength, you'll be given the defense of Confederate soldiers with that. The guardianship of this issue. Emulation of his virtues and the perpetuation of those principles he loved, which made him glorious, which you also cherish. Remember, it is your duty to say that the true history of the South is presented to future generations. And I will dismiss the word prayer. Please stand and move your hats, gentlemen. Heavenly Father, most holy and glorious Lord God. The giver of all good gifts and blessings. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity once again to come out and remember and honor our ancestors. We thank you for this beautiful day. I ask your blessing on everyone here today, Father, and the families. Lead God, direct us, bless us, and keep us in safety until we may return here once again to honor these soldiers who gave their lives for the South. In the most holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
scare the kitty. Ladies and gentlemen, you are dismissed for my many thanks. No, you you stay right there. I don't know.